Friday, the link is in the link in the description. The link is in the description. In the description. Sure, this is my son. Thank you, thank you. Mm, I feel like I dropped something. Poems again. I started like in the evening though, so today I want to try start from the morning and see how many I can write. I moved away from that website I was reading poetry on because the poems are trash. So now I'm like reading. I'm trying to find like classic, well, not classic necessarily, but you know, just poems by people who know what they're doing. And yeah, I've been reading some Shakespeare, some sonnets, some some of Shakespeare's sonnets. I think I read uh, Sonnet 116, which was dope. But I just remember it being dope. I can't recite it. Which one was that one? Was it the one... Where he starts saying, shall I compare thee to a summer's day or something like that. I don't think it was that one. I think it was another one. Anyway. It was dope. I saw something that I wanted to tap on. Oh, let me grab that. notepad and I haven't used most of it. I should probably write something here. 
How did I write that? I don't know. You could write, I could write my poems in here, but then you have to then transcribe them digitally. And I don't want to do all that. So I used to write, like even my stories, I used to try write them on paper first, you know, to be fancy. Well, I still write on paper. I still write on paper, like some dork. But then I realized once you write on paper, you still have to type it out on your computer because obviously everything is digital these days. You want to publish it digitally and stuff. I was like, this is too much work. I'd just rather just write it digitally and not worry about writing it on paper. Just common sense. Just, just. Common sense. I don't know if anyone can remember that short, that short DJ stint I went through. Bought this, bought this deck, and I was actually DJing, and I was like, po I was posting mixes on SoundCloud and stuff. They're still up, but I'm not sure what my account name is though. It's been a while. I think it's been more like more than a year since I lost it. That. Been more than a year? Not even two years. No, I think... Was that 2022? It can't be. There's no way it was 2022. I think it was 2023. When I was doing all that. Right? I'm losing track of time. I don't know where I'm at. Wait, can you even see it? I hope the camera's pointing. Up. But yeah, I was DJing for some time. DJing is hard. Well... Some genres are easier to, to DJ than other. I think being a rap DJ is particularly difficult because you know rap is all over the place when it comes to BPMs and and um, keys, the keys of the, of the music. So when you're trying to match everything, it's a bit of a challenge. BPM is more of a problem than the music, the music, the song's key. BPM is more of a problem. Cause then one song will be like 86 BPM, then on the other one it will be like 170, and the other one will be 115. You're like, man. So you have to find songs within a similar range so you can match them. And it's a bit challenging sometimes. But if you're a house DJ, house is a bit easier because house is more streamlined. It's easy to find a lot of songs, like the electronic songs are like 130. 115 around that range It's easier to find songs within similar BPM ranges And I feel like there's more I feel like the DJ space caters more to like house music electronic music in general That's where it started, right? I'm not sure It feels like it was just built for that genre of music like these brands cater to that genre of music more than other genres. Because even when you watch tutorials, like DJ tutorials, they're usually playing like house music, electronic music. I listen to a lot of electronic music anyway, so I don't mind. But yeah, I, I was, when I was DJing, I was DJing rap music. I had six sets though. Well, I, well, well actually, to clarify, I had like one set at this, uh, it was at my own event. I, I had this music event that I um, put together. But then I'd publish, or I'd, I'd post like sets on SoundCloud. So that's what I mean when I say I had six sets. Anyway. It's a lot of pressure, dude. Because you have to get it right when you're live. When you're live, it's like... Look at this. I don't even know what this powder is, this mysterious powder. 
because it sits it sits like under my bedside table. So I'm not even sure. I knew this girl, she was a DJ, she was she was hot. But she was in the city for like a limited amount of time, so eh, anyway. I don't think we would have been compatible. She's like more she was more like the party type. I'm not. So producers like people who make females make beats be nice to meet one they're there of course but never met one you just see them like i just know like the celebrity ones but i've never actually met one it's always been my dream to i've always liked playing music for people like 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 for example for in a car like i've always liked getting the aux chord and playing people music and i've been complimented on my selection these days i don't listen to as much rap as i used to i don't you know i'm trying to move away from the more negative side of things so i don't know i think i've lost my touch I'm not as into I'm not as into the rap music as I used to be, so I'm not as I'm not as up to date with what's going on with the popular sounds and stuff. But I, I used to be sick. Like my playlists. Like you can actually go on my Spotify. So if you if you check the link in my description and you go to my artist page on Spotify, at the bottom they they have artist playlists. You can check out, I've, I've got like 60 something playlists, I think. I think I've got like exactly 60 published playlists. It's my, like my playlists. So you can check those out. The newer ones, the newer ones, uh, you, you can see with the new ones that I was departing from like the mainstream rap stuff but if you go to the old ones you can you can kind of get a taste of what i was into at the time yeah, and i think i put together some good playlists now I'll, i will say my playlists are quite eclectic like they, they they mix all sorts of genres and stuff so it's not just rap it's like it's also a bunch of stuff so you know if you want to hear some interesting songs and maybe get exposed to some new stuff you can check out those playlists it's on my spotify you can just tap the link to my music and then go to my artist profile and then you'll see at the bottom of my artist profile the playlists i've made they don't put them in order though in chronological order i think they just put random play like it's just random order so. I don't I'm not sure why they do that.
I might try to fix. Periodical reminder of my favorite game ever. Metal Gear Solid 4. Eh, it fluctuates. Sometimes I like Batman Arkham City. I'm thinking like Uncharted 4 might be one of my favorites now that I'm thinking about it. I really enjoyed Uncharted 4. I don't know. I, I think it was very well received, but I don't know if a lot of people have it as their favorite game of all time. But I really liked Nathan Drake as a character. And I really liked that cinematic storytelling, the set pieces, everything about that game was just fun to me. I really liked it. It was funny, it was exciting, it was so cool. Like the the, the action was amazing. Cause I really like Uncharted 4. Oh man, the graphics till this day it's, it's one of the craziest some of the craziest graphics in gaming period till this day. It came out in tech twenty fifteen. And it's, it still looks unbelievable, even on, on PS4. It's an excellent game. That's just, that's just what I'm into, like, those are the type of games I'm into mostly. Um, I always talk about how when I get a girl, I love to play video games with her. That's the condition under which I play like these other games. Because I, I don't really have fun when I play them by myself. It's only like when I play games like Uncharted that I have like a like a truly fun time. Where I'm like, like I keep coming back. These other games, eh? You know, it's just I have my I I know what I like and I just stick to that. I don't think I'm the type of guy just you know play all these different games. And it's constantly something for me to play. That's why you know I can go months and months and months without playing games, and then one game comes out that I'm interested in, I play that, I finish it, and I move on. Like yeah, God of War Ragnarok when that came out, yeah, that, I spent a lot of hours playing that, and then when I finished it, eh, I tried playing The Witcher 3. I didn't really get very far, and then I tried playing, uh, I tried replaying Bioshock Infinite. I didn't get very far. I tried playing Control, I didn't get very far. So, you know, you just move on. You're just like, I'll just wait until something that I, I like comes out. I don't have a PS5, so... If I had a PS5, I'd probably get Spider-Man 2 and play that. I heard rumors of, you know, they're, they're, they're incorporating a bunch of woke elements, storytelling elements. I'm like, oh my god. But, you know, I think I'll still enjoy it though, so I'll, I'll get it. I really like Spider-Man as a character. I'm a sucker for Spider-Man stories. And the gameplay is fun to me, and I just like swinging around. I don't know. So I'll give it a shot and I'll see. I hope, I hope they didn't make it too woke, because then that would just be off-putting. But yeah, I'll, I'll get a PS5 just to get Spider-Man 2, if I have the money. And then, yeah. But definitely, I think it'll be fun. It'll be fun to play with a partner. In a relationship, you just play, play games together. That'll be fun. Because then it's like you're with someone else, so... The experience changes, the dynamic changes, and... Where are my chopsticks? There they are. Yeah, everything is, everything is more interesting when you're doing it with something else, you, someone else, you know? Everything, everything becomes more interesting and entertaining when you have company, so... A lot of games are probably play that I wouldn't have otherwise played if I didn't have someone playing with me.
even like watching movies. I used to watch a lot of movies by myself. These days, movies are trying. I only really go when there's like something very interesting coming out. I'm actually getting into series now. I, I've never been the type. I've never been the series person. I don't watch a lot of series. But now I'm, I'm getting into series more. I'm watching Peaky Blinders currently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Peaky Blinders is getting more and more progressive with each season. And I don't know, man. <laughs> it doesn't make sense for the time period it was set in. Because they're, they're espousing all these feminist values and stuff. I'm like, it was like 1913 or 14, like early 20th century. It doesn't even make sense to, to be portraying these gangsters. Like, it's so funny. Because like, they're gangsters, but they're trying to portray them as, like, progressive and feminist. I'm like, it doesn't even make sense. Like, of course they weren't. These were hard men. They, they lived in a different time, like... Like, please stop trying to shoehorn these ideas into places where they don't fit. So I'm, 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 I'm hoping they, they, they rein it in because with each season, <laughs> we get a bit, a bit more work. So we'll see what, what season three looks. I'm on season two right now. We'll see what season three looks like if they, if they keep you know, inching forward in that direction. And I think there were like six seasons. We'll see. Cause you know, the issue with like good shows, the more seasons they had, the, 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 like the, the higher the risk that they're going to mess it up somehow. That's what happened with prison break. I don't know if you know the show prison break, but it started out great, but then they just kept going. And the story got more and more ridiculous. It it, 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 it it was about breaking out of prison, but they eventually, like, the government was involved and the president was involved. It was, it was crazy. It got too big. It started out very simple, like, homeboy needs to break out of prison. But then it was wildly popular and they renewed it and they started incorporating, good, you know, more intricate plots. And after about season three or something it, it it got so ridiculous it's almost like it's like what happened with fast and furious you know fast and furious it, it started on just being about these street racers right and the world of street racing but then at some point it just became like about espionage and and governments and and, and war and whatever the case may be it, it got crazy they went to space like so like literally losing the plot bro like they lost the plot they went off the rails so that is like unrecognizable you don't it's like what what is this so with peaky blinders i feel like you have to know when to end i'm worried that it's gonna keep going and it's, it's gonna lose its um appeal it's just going to get ridiculous at some point. Because there's only so many stories you can tell, right? About within these limited settings. I mean, well, it depends how you frame it. It depends on, on the type of story you're trying to tell. But when it's like these gangsters who are having all these crazy violent experiences and taking over this and taking over that, there's only so much they can conquer. Like, only so much territories they can conquer and only so many so many people they can kill before it, it starts to get ridiculous you know what i'm saying so we'll see i'm having a fun time right now i am re um, i don't want to give spoilers for anyone that hasn't watched peaky blinders yeah i won't give spoilers go watch it if you haven't watched it already peaky blinders probably watch the bear off them down the peaky blinders i've heard good things about the bear i want to watch something romantic 
like something funny and romantic i, I want to watch something light-hearted that isn't like yeah something romantic my issue with ah you take what you can get i guess i don't like modern romances because i just feel like yeah i'm not a fan of modern romance i'm not a fan of the way people do things these days i don't think anyone's a fan of the way people do things these days everyone complains about modern dating and how trash it is and unfulfilling it is because it is yeah it is trash it is unfulfilling it's like it's not romantic at all and people just hook up all the time and just like there's nothing really appealing about it so i might have to watch some retro stuff I, um, you never know. You might get surprised. There might be some something, some some gems out there. Let me know in the comments any any romance shows you recommend. I remember watching a show called Love. It was on Netflix. It was called Love. Wait, am I thinking of the right one? I was young when I watched this. So I, I enjoyed it. I don't know if me now, this version of me would would enjoy it. But when I was younger, and I wasn't, I didn't really care about. I wasn't as conservative. I wasn't as traditional in my thinking as I am now. So I was able to enjoy a lot of stuff. Now it's like, <laughs> you know, something that is harder to enjoy, I guess. It is what it is. Ooh, let me wipe my controller. It's dirty. Just let me show you some like dust. Can you see the dust? Some dust. It's, it's been sitting on the floor for like weeks. It just fell on the floor and I never picked it up. I was like, eh, you just stay over there. You stay over there. And as a result, it has, it has accumulated some dust. <sighs> this is what is known as negligence. There was a line from Peaky Blinded that just made me laugh, dude. Um, <laughs> but this one character it was like a family meeting and the one guy had asked this other guy's wife a question and then the, the guy was like I speak for my household and then the character was like uh, what did he say he said this is a a modern enterprise what not what not um, what did he say women of women of women can speak or I can't remember what he said but basically you're saying we're progressive but we don't do that and I was like I I I I I, I agree but this this is 1913 or whatever the case may be you're not a progressive enterprise you're not supposed to be like you have no reason to be I was just laughing I'm like this is ridiculous you can see the writers shoehorning in their their beliefs and idea. I mean, it's sloppy writing. If you're writing a period piece, right? If you're if you're writing something about a different time, you have to be accurate. For example, you can't pretend like during that time, for like that they were nice to blacks, or something like that. 
Like you can't be like, if we have black characters within this time period, let's pretend that people are being nice to them. Well, they will do that, by the way. It's it's a weird cognitive dissonance situation going on where the yeah. Anyway, I don't want to go into all of that, but to be a thorough disciplined writer you should stick to the script be practical be realistic that's what i would do if i was writing i'll just i'll just keep it up buck this is this is how they behave during that time this is these are the attitudes these are the beliefs during that time you don't want to see the writer's hand you know and li- little things like that make you see the writer's hand then okay anyway Let me know what you think in the comments. You know, I like to pray before I. I'm not really so dear Father God. Thank you for this individual watching this run. I think you're making them all unique and kind them on a path towards peace, prosperity, and purpose. Thank God, blessing this person who wonderful people in their life for love and take care of them and being the absolute best out of them. Thank you for maintaining. Wait, what? Thank you for maintaining the ones that are there to do the same thing. Thank you for blessing this person with the spirit of gratitude so they can give thanks for the wonderful things in life and by giving. Thanks, they can find peace, contentment, and attracting more blessings. Let your presence be felt in this person's life so they know that your God, that you are, that you love them, you're always going to be there for them. Good health, long life, and happiness over this individual and everyone they care about. You might never pain, chase them, 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 pain